everyone, my name is Mangrove Jane, also known as Groves. I hope you are having a wonderful day today and both your first life and your second life are treating you well. Recently I read a post in New World Notes about a small thread that had recently cropped up in the Twitterverse based on an article written in 2015. I was thrilled and dismayed and delighted all at once to realise that this was the same article that had actually inspired me to go on my first Second Life University tour. It's just over three years since that original article was written and it's been about a year and a half since I wrote my blog post on the topic. So I figure that it's about time for me to do another university tour and this time I'm taking you all with me. So Second Life is quite a long and scattered history with educational institutions. One commenter on the New World Notes blog left this fantastic crumb of information. When I started working at Linden Lab back in 2005, my focus was on exploring how Second Life could be used for educational purposes and to help build that community. I thought it would be important to get some well-known universities involved and encourage them to buy private islands to experiment with. And since I was living in Boston, I thought approaching different people at Harvard would be a good place to start. And that led to the Berkman Center at Harvard and folks like Charlie Nesson, and now you know the rest of the story. The Harvard Berkman Sandbox is one of the places that are mentioned in the original article and I have visited there a few times now and I'm actually going to take you back there again a little bit later on in the video. So that's how it all started, but what happened since then? Well, there was a university boom at one point. Wikipedia had these interesting statistics. Research published in 2007 suggested that development, teaching and or learning activities using Second Life were present in over 80% of UK universities. As of 2008, at least 300 universities around the world teach courses or conduct research in Second Life. But it seems that interest waned for the universities for a number of reasons. Not only was the cost of setup prohibitive, but so were the ongoing fees. There were also problems with acceptance of the world as a serious tool for education. Some students did not see the value. They treated it as any other computer game they were used to and therefore undermined the serious role Second Life could play in educational outcomes. Some teachers saw it just as a way to play around with some interesting technology. There were problems with students mucking around and being distracted and distracting, as well as teachers not really being prepared for the different teaching style that would be needed. There were further problems with engagement with younger people. The graphics were not really up to par, the interface was not intuitive, and it generally takes a while to learn your way around the world, unless you actually spend time teaching your students the basics of the world, as well as expose and hold them to etiquette and social norms, a lot can go wrong. There is an excellent chapter in a book called Women and Second Life, Essays on Virtual Identity, Work and Play, that talks about the problems of Second Life education and sums it up with this great title. Zoe's Law for Second Life, or if it can, it will, so expect it. Zoe's Law kicked in from the beginning of class. The students and I logged into Second Life and convened at our class location. Immediately things began to go south. Students wouldn't sit down. They played with gadgets and accessories they had gathered for their avatars. They wandered around looking at everything around them. It seemed nothing I said or did virtually would corral them. When things had finally begun to settle, it happened. At first I noticed something rolling across the circle we were all seated in, and then there appeared in the middle of our circle a big pile of virtual feces complete with flies buzzing around it. As if this wasn't bad enough, the next thing that happened was unthinkable. On every student's screen, as well as my own, appeared a repeated image of a supersized naked woman. Just perfect, I thought, as I calmly directed all of the students to log out of Second Life so we could try again. And that for anyone who has been a resident of Second Life for a period of time is pretty much what any of us would have expected to happen, right? But there were other experiences. In university lectures and tutorials, she is a slim blonde in her 20s by the name of Rosanna Lacey. At home, she is a little less slim, a little less blonde, age 35 and called Rosanna Branch. That's cyberspace for you. And it is here that more than two-thirds of Branch's classes for the master's course she is doing have taken place. 
Up to three times a week, her 3D animated alter ego has met those of her tutor and fellow students on Edinburgh University's cyber campus. They discuss ideas by typing in their characters' words and fly across the cyber world together to meet others with the same academic interests. So I could go on about this sort of stuff with case studies and research papers for quite some time because I find it endlessly fascinating. I'll probably write some more on it on my blog post that accompanies the video for anyone else who is interested. But right now, I want to go actually visit some of the university sims that are still left here and show you what they are like. Now, I want to make the distinction here that I am not visiting the education or not-for-profit sims here who do some incredible work in world, but only a few of the university sims that are actually still around. So let's have a bit of a look, shall we? Now, this is the Virtual University of Edinburgh, and this is one I haven't actually been to before, so that's kind of cool. What is happening here? What is this? What is this thing? I love that there are souvenirs just all over the universities. Like they gave away so much free stuff. Oh my god, I've got like a headset on now. Which, look, that's very cool. Alright, let's go for a run. This building was created in 2011. There we go. Imaginarium. This is a collection of digital artifacts which catalogues the rise of the cyborg in contemporary feminist theory, mainly informed by Donna Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto. Of course it is. First published in 1985. On this floor you will find a collection of digital images of the cyborg and quotes from Donna Haraway. If you click these you get note cards. Second floor you will find the references for this build. You will also find information about the digital cultures course and also a teleporter and video sphere which will allow you to watch the movie on the evolution of the cyborg theory. Oh, that's kind of cool. I want to learn stuff about cyborg theory.
job, Virtual University of Edinburgh. Good job. Okay, so this place is the University of um, Texas San Antonio, otherwise known as UTSA Tejano Tech. And they are still active in Second Life, actually. The last time I was here, they had a different art exhibit showing and they've changed it since then and um i'm not sure if they still do classes here but they definitely still do different art exhibits and they change the spaces around every now and again so it's kind of cool to come here and just check it out so let's go have a look see shall we and i kind of like this place that they didn't make it look like a real university that they use their imagination a little bit and made something imaginative like they made imaginative spaces they weren't bound by reality I guess This one was installed in April 2018, which is this year, a few months ago. This installation I took a snapshot of 44 blindfolded and shirtless avatars, myself included, and displayed them on the dinner table. Highly inspired by the Tropicalia, a cultural movement that occurred in Brazil in the 60s. My work I like to explore the possibilities of developing a context to display digital images. I hope you'll enjoy the time spent here. I will. should definitely come and check out UTSA's university it's really interesting to have a look around there's so much happening in the space at any given time this is the Harvard Berkman campus in Second Life that is the one that was has been mentioned quite a few times now not only in the New World Notes article, but also in the original 2015 article. one of the prettiest university sims that I think that I have toured because it doesn't look abandoned it doesn't have that look and that feel like there's nobody here and there won't ever be anybody here again it's still got that look and feel like people are coming and people are doing things and any day now you know Harvard's gonna slip back into their second life education which is kind of nice. And there's actually things
things to do out here. There are games and stuff and you can build and you can play the games and you can do all sorts of things out here at the Bergman Sandbox. When you come to these universities, don't forget to look up. Look in the sky, look around. There's lots of things just everywhere. I wonder if I can find the dragon that used to be here actually. He was kind of cool. He must have taken the avatar dragon away. Aww. If you come here and you see it, let me know. Let me know where it is. I can't remember exactly where it was. I want to mention that I visited and took footage at five universities, but editing the footage down to fit into a video that was less than half an hour while showing you all the things at The Sims was proving to be a bit of a nightmare. So in the end, I decided to quickly show you around three of them. I'm going to take the footage I have of the other universities, as well as the extra bits of footage I edited out of the Harvard video and release some five minute videos just focusing on the individual places and what I found there. Have you been to any of the universities in Second Life? Or were you ever one of the students who attended or one of the academics who built the universities? If so, I would love to hear from you. Please comment down below and let me know if you have or do visit any of the campuses and what your experiences were and what you thought. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and while you are there, punch the bell as well, which will give you notifications of any new videos I release. And I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a good one. Bye.